Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Listen up after today's podcast. Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, will end during our upcoming season, during Season 10. And I'll talk about what will come after that. So we'll have that news after the episode. Now, one thing I've noticed a lot of going around these days is just a lot of nostalgia for the 1980s. 80s television, as well as 80s movies and 80s music. Uh, so if that's something that interests you, you'll be interested in an upcoming concert featuring Boy George and the Culture Club, as well as the B-52s. Grammy Award legends Boy George and the Culture Club are embarking on a major U.S. headline tour. Touring with the multi-platinum selling band the B-52s and special guest Thompson Twins Tom Bailey. The live tour starring Boy George and Culture Club will be at the Reno Event Center on September 22nd. For tickets, visit Ticketmaster.com or call 1-888-288-1833. That's 888-288-1833. Presented by The Row and Horrors Reno. All right, well, now it's time for today's episode of Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, the original air date, November the 3rd, 1949, and this one is the Forgotten Cave Murder Case. It's time now for Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Forgotten Cave Murder Case. It's so unnecessary to suffer from the pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia when anison gives you such incredibly fast relief. There's a scientific reason for this fast action. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. If you're one of those who've never been given anison by your own physician or dentist, let me urge you to try it. Get a handy box of anison tablets at your druggist tonight. For most effective relief, use only as directed. It's spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Now for Mr. Keene and the Forgotten Cave Murder Case. Our scene opens in the dark, damp recesses of a cave, located deep in an oceanside cliff on Long Island. Two men, both with small electric flashlights, are clambering over the slippery rocks, going deeper inside the tomb-like cave. Take it easy, Jim. These rocks are covered with slime. Yeah, let's have another look at that map, Ed. Well, we can't be far from what we're after. Look, Jim. The cave breaks into two passages right ahead of us. And the map doesn't say which one to take. Well, maybe they come together again farther up. I tell you what, Ed. I'll take the left passage and you take the right. No, listen, Jim. Let's get out of here. I'm afraid. Oh, forget it. We may be a hundred yards away from a million dollars. And I'm seeing it through. I'm going into this part of the cave on the left. Jim! Jim! I'm going back. I'm not staying in this cave another... Jim! Jim! Jim, what happened? Did you fall? There's a knife in his back. He's dead. I must see Mr. Keene right away. Right away. Take it easy, young fella. What's got you so excited? 
I might fancy Mr. Keene's part. Please let me see Mr. Keene immediately. Either I'm mad or there's been a murder. Sense preserve us. A murder? I uh, overheard what this young man said, Mike. Come in, will you? Let's hear about it. My name is Ed Johnson, Mr. Keene. And I'll never rest until I find who murdered my friend Jim Ramsey. And got away with his body besides. Got away with his body, Mr. Johnson? Uh Well, that sounds strange. Are you sure your friend was murdered? Mr. Keene, the local police thought I was a crank. They wouldn't believe my story. That's why I came here. Well, Mr. Johnson, I suggest you sit down quietly and tell me just what happened. We were in a cave when Jim was murdered. In a cave? What were you doing there? Looking for hidden gold, Mr. Keene. Maybe pirates. <laughs> that sounds like one of the fairy stories I heard at my mother's knee. Pirate's gold. Well, let him proceed, Mike. Go ahead, Mr. Johnson. I realize it all sounds crazy, Mr. Keene. But it's true. I've known Jim Ramsey for over a year now. We were in the clam and oyster business on the Long Island coast. We bought a tract of land for our business. I see. On a deserted part of our land, near the coast, there was an old abandoned house. The place was falling apart, but I've always been pretty handy with tools, and Jim was too. So you decided to repair the house and live in it together near your work, That's eh? right, Mr. Keene. And how did you get this idea of pirate's gold in a cave, Mr. Johnson? We were repairing the chimney, Mr. Mr. Clancy, and... We found a map under some bricks. A pirate's map and a chimney in an old house on Long Island. Well, it still sounds like a, like a fairy story to me. Mr. Johnson, I'm afraid Mike doesn't believe in buried treasure. But the map led us to an old forgotten cave. The cave was near the house, about 30 feet underground. That's where Jim Ramsey was murdered and disappeared. Hmm. I guess you don't believe me either. But Jim's death was real. He was murdered. A knife in his back. I saw his body. Well, after the local police left, Mr. Johnson, did you return to the cave to look for your friend's body? I didn't have the map anymore. It was in Jim's pocket when his body disappeared. Besides, I was afraid I'd be murdered like Jim was. Mr. Keene, you're known as one of the cleverest investigators in the country. Someone's been murdered, and something must be done about it. Well, I'm honest to say this whole thing sounds fantastic, Mr. Johnson. But I'll look into it. You mean you'll help me? I'll do what I can. When can you come to Long Island? Sometime this afternoon. Right, there's a train at 1. We'll get to Shellview at 3.30. I'll meet you at the station. Very well. Goodbye, Mr. Keene. Mr. Clancy. And thanks again. Goodbye, Mr. Johnson. So long. Sure, and you're not going to waste your time on a yarn like that, Mr. Keene. I'm almost as suspicious of it as you are, Mike. And yet I'm curious, too. But even the local police think this fellow Johnson's a little off balance. Still... Why would he come here to ask my help? There certainly is a cave. The police were there. Well, boss, do you think that he and his partner may have fallen in with some dope smugglers or something like that? You mean a gang would be using that cave to hide their loot? Sure. It's possible. Mike, I see you're becoming just as curious as I am. Well, there's only one thing to do about it. We're going out to that old house in Long Island and that secret cave and see for ourselves. Johnson said he'd meet us at the station, but uh, I don't see him, Mike. Yeah, I know it, Mr. Keene. He's got us way down here in Long Island on a wild goose chase. Are uh, you gents looking for a taxi? I got one right over here. Hire him Webb, gents, at your service. Oh, uh, do you happen to know where the Johnson house is? Uh, you mean that old busted-down hen coop those two fellas lived in? Sure. I can take you there. Come along, Mike. Okay, Mr. Keene. Uh, Mr. Keene, the great investigator. Well... I guess you're here to look into that disappearing body business. Do you know anything about it, Hiram? I mean, how Jim Ramsey disappeared so mysteriously? Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. One thing I do know, though, this section of the country, I know it backwards and forwards. And maybe I can help you out. Thanks, Hiram. Step into the taxi, gents. She ain't very fancy, but she'll get us there. Excuse me. Is this a public taxi? Sure is, ma'am, but she's taken now. Oh, please. I, I'm sure these gentlemen won't mind. This is very urgent. I've got to get up to the Ramsey house immediately. The Ramsey house? Maybe it's known as the Johnson house. It's an old place my husband bought with Ed Johnson. Oh, you're Jim Ramsey's wife? Yes. Margaret Ramsey. You know my husband? No, my name is Keene. My partner and I are on our way to that house ourselves. Mr. Keene, according to Johnson... Wasn't this lady's husband the one who was murdered in that case? Murdered? Jim? No. 
No, I don't believe it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ramsey, but it hasn't definitely been established. All we know so far is that your husband's body has disappeared. I guess you won't object now if I go in the taxi with you, Mr. Keith. Why, of course not. All right, Hiram, let's head directly for that old house. My husband, Jim, left me almost a year ago, Mr. Keene, and I only found out where he was during the past two weeks. We had a bitter quarrel. About what, Mrs. Ramsey? Another woman. She was very beautiful and artist, and she'd fallen in love with Jim. But we'd been through so much, I felt it was the final straw. How do you mean, you've been through so much? Uh, Jim was a dreamer and something of a mystery, even to me. I never heard him mention a word about his family. Oh, I see. He always believed he'd be able to find the the gold at the end of the rainbow. Every time he came home with a new and sillier scheme to make money, my patience wore thin. Then his relationship with Ann Wharton finished me. Ann Wharton was the artist who was in love with him? Yes, Mr. Keene. Now you tell me that Jim may be dead, that he was murdered. We're not absolutely sure, Mrs. Ramsey. Oh, sense preservers. Don't jam your brakes on like that, mister. This taxi will fall right apart. Uh, that feller's half blocking the road. Looks as if his car's bust down. Sorry if I'm in your way. I broke an axle on my car a few minutes ago. You know, if there's a phone nearby, I'd like to call for a tow car. Uh, no telephones in these parts, mister. We're 11 miles from town. Yeah, I know that. I'm going to drop these folks off up the road a bit. If you want to come along, I'll take you to town on my way back. Well, if these gentlemen and this lady don't mind... Well, not at all. Get right in the taxi. Thanks a lot. My name's Bly, Sanford Bly. Mine is Keith. This is Mrs. Ramsey. How do you do? And my partner, Mr. Clancy. Hello. Glad to know you. Did you say Keen, sir? Yes. The well-known investigator? Well, I'm a salesman myself, Mr. Keene. Wristwatches. Long Island's my territory. Uh, there's the Johnson house now, Mr. Keen, up ahead of us. Hey, sure, and the place looks as if it's ready to fall apart. I wonder where the cave is. The cave? What cave, Mr. Keene? Well, there's supposed to be a secret cave nearby, Mr. Bly. I was inside that cave a long time ago. It's underneath the house. Uh, we can stop right here, I reckon. Uh, what do I owe you, Hiram? Three fifty. Mr. Keene. What is it, Mrs. Ramsey? Look, there's a woman on the ledge near the edge of the cliff. Yes, I see her. She seems to be painting something on an easel. It's Anne Wharton. My husband Jim's been seeing her, and I was right. Oh, no. Don't jump to conclusions, Mrs. Ramsey. I suggest we have a talk with Miss Wharton first. Uh, Hiram. Yes, Mr. Keene? Would you mind waiting here with your taxi for a few minutes? Sure. I'll stay. Mr. Bly, would you mind if we delayed you? Not at all. I'll wait in the taxi. Come along, Mike. We'll go over there with Mrs. Ramsey and have a talk with Ann Wharton. Okay, boss. You can hear the surf now, Mike. That cliff must overlook the sea. This place looks like a desert, boss. Nothing here but sand dunes, rocks, and that broken down old house. Why my husband came here to such a deserted place, I'll never understand. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Are you looking for... Oh, Mrs. Ramsey. Yes, I'm Mrs. Ramsey. May I ask what you're doing here, Miss Wharton? I'm painting a picture. The view is beautiful from this cliff. How far down is the sea? I'd like to take a look. May I ask where Mr. Johnson is, Miss Wharton? Mr. Johnson? Well, who is he? I don't know him. He's my husband's partner. And I'd like to know where my husband Jim is, too. I had no idea he was anywhere in the vicinity, Mrs. Ramsey. I don't believe you. Mr. King, boss, come here, quick. What is it, Mike? Look down below, Mr. King. Say it's preserved. It's a man's body floating there in the water. A man's body, did you say? Boss, look at his face. You see who that fella is? He's the one who came to our office. Yes, Mike. It's Ed Johnson, Jim Ramsey's friend. And even from this distance, it's easy to tell that the man is dead. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the Forgotten Cave murder case. Meanwhile, beware of unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. 
Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Those cracks and crevices where food particles can decay must be reached to have a really clean mouth, a welcome breath. Your dentist knows this to be true. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Kalanos gives amazing dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to penetrate hard-to-reach dental areas. Helps dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath and tooth decay. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Kalanos has high polishing action, too. Brightens dingy teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Kalanos is gentle, safe even for children's teeth and tender gums. Enjoy its cool, clean, minty flavor. Kalanos is dentist recommended. Cleans your teeth bright, keeps your breath right. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Get Kalanos with dental floss action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the forgotten cave murder case. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating a situation that seems to grow more dangerous and mysterious with every passing hour. First, a man named Edward Johnson came to Mr. Keene and said his business associate and friend, Jim Ramsey, had been murdered in an old forgotten cave on Long Island, and the body had disappeared. Now, when Mr. Keene and Mike appear at the scene of the crime... They find that Johnson himself has suffered his partner's fate, and his body pushed off a cliff into the sea. A few minutes later, Mike has succeeded in recovering the body, and as he and Mr. Keene examine it on the beach at the foot of the cliff. You were stabbed, Mr. Keene. There's a knife between his shoulder blades. Yes, Mike. Ed Johnson was stabbed and pushed into the sea. We'd better send word to the police in town. Well, we'll tell that hillbilly Hiram Webb to drive back in his taxi. Oh, here's Sanford Bly, the salesman we picked up on the road. What's the trouble, Mr. Keene? I... Holy smoke. Is he dead? Yes, Mr. Bly, he was murdered. Wait a minute. I've seen that man before. You have? Where? On the road, Mr. Keene, about a half an hour ago. Just before my car broke down, I passed a man and a woman walking along the side of the highway. And Johnson here was the man? Yes, sir. Look up there in the cliff, Mr. Bly. Mrs. Ramsey is standing near the edge with another woman, a Miss Wharton. Why, that's the woman who was walking with Johnson on the road. Are you sure? Positive. She was wearing a beret like an artist. I guess you and your partner, Mr. Clancy, here want to report this murder immediately. Yes. Right now, I intend to have a talk with Ann Wharton. <laughs> Here's Miss Wharton, boss, and Mrs. Ramsey. What happened to that man who was floating in the sea, Mr. Keene? It was Mr. Johnson. He was dead, Miss Wharton. He was evidently murdered by the same person who killed Jim Ramsey. You mean Jim is dead, too? Yes. But up to now, his body hasn't been discovered. I... I never knew. I never dreamed. Didn't you? Then what were you doing here? You didn't come to paint a picture. Miss Wharton... Just why did you come here to this old house, if not to see Jim Ramsey? All right. I'll admit it now, Mr. Keene. I did come to see Mrs. Ramsey's husband. I hoped I could make up with him. What do you mean, make up with him? I'm afraid I made a mistake about Jim. I thought he'd left his wife for good when I fell in love with him. Later, when he broke off our relationship, I realized I was wrong. It was his wife he loved, not me. Then why did you follow him here? I wanted to help him make up with you, Mrs. Ramsey. I don't believe her, Mr. King. It's true. Miss Wharton, you said before that you didn't know Jim's partner, Mr. Johnson. But Mr. Bly told me that he saw you walking along the road with him. That's right. He was the man whose body you just found. But I didn't lie to you, Mr. King. I only asked him the way to the ocean. I didn't know that man's name was Johnson. Oh, Miss Wharton, I suggest that you and Mrs. Ramsey wait inside the house. Mr. King. You mean you're holding me on suspicion of murder? I'm holding you as well as everyone else until this murder case is solved. I'm sorry if I implicated Miss Warden, Mr. Keene. I didn't mean to make a suspicious character out of her. For that matter, I suppose I fall into that category myself. Why, Mr. Bly? Well, after all, my car broke down just a short distance from here, and I was near the scene of the crime. But only a homicidal maniac would murder for no reason, and you don't appear to be a maniac. 
Oh, by the way, do you have the correct time? The police will want to know exactly when we found Johnson's body. Why, uh... It's five minutes to five, Mr. Kane. Uh, boss, there's the taxi, but where's the hillbilly taxi driver? Oh, here he comes now. Well, Mr. Keene, guess I may as well start back to town. Where have you been, Hiram? Just looking around a bit. We just discovered the body of a murdered man. What? I want you to report it to the town police immediately. Uh, I'll get back to town in my taxi as fast as I... Mr. Keene! What is it? Come over here and look at this. What's the trouble? My tires. All four of them are flat. The car is useless. Four flat tires isn't exactly a coincidence. I'll say it ain't. Someone must have punched holes in them. Who's going into town to tell the police, Mr. Keene? May I make a suggestion? What is it, Mr. Bly? Well, my car's broken down, too, but I have four good tires. My car's the same make as Hiram's, only much newer, of course. Now, if you wanted to take the trouble to switch tires, it might solve the problem. That's not a bad idea, Mr. Keene. Well, we can try it anyway, Mike. Well, between Hiram, Mr. Bly, and myself, why, we can do the job in an hour. All right. Meanwhile, I'm going to take a look at that forgotten cave. Uh, the entrance is just below the cliff over there on the right, Mr. King, near the old house. Well, Mike, uh, perhaps you can switch those car tires yourself with only Mr. Bly's help. Oh, I think we can manage it, boss. What about me? You seem to know your way around here quite well, Hiram. I'd like you to guide me to the forgotten cave, to the place where Jim Ramsey's body was last seen. <laughs> Here's the spot, Mr. Keene. At least this is as far as the police went. And how far into this cave did you go, Hiram? Well, no further than this. I don't mean on the day Ramsey's body disappeared. I mean half an hour ago. What? When you left your taxi a little while ago, you came to this cave again. How do you know that, Mr. Keene? I noticed there was slime on one of your hands. And it came from these damp walls. I wasn't trying to put something over on you, Mr. Keene. I swear I wasn't. Then what were you doing in this cave? Uh, I was just snooping around. You found something, though. I can tell by your manner that you're hiding very important facts from me. Mr. Keene, I found the body. Jim Ramsey's body. Where? Come over here, Mr. Keene. See for yourself. <laughs> Bend down. Reach behind this flat rock. All right. Feel anything? Yes. The body of a man. It's undoubtedly Jim Ramsey. There's a small tunnel in there. But nobody would have found it except me. I don't see how you found it either, Hiram. Uh, I used to play in this cave years ago when I was a little shaver, Mr. Keene. I know every nook and cranny in the place. Just a minute, I can... Feel something in Jim Ramsey's pocket. There it is. Well, I'll be darned. This is the so-called treasure map, Hiram. Do you know anything about it? No, Mr. Keene. I, I, I've been telling you the truth. I, I had nothing to do with them murders. Well, Hiram, I'm going to give you a chance to put yourself completely in the clear. Now, if you follow my directions carefully... You'll prove your innocence. I'll do anything you want me to do, Mr. Keene. Then go back to my partner, Mike Clancy, and give him this message. And make certain no one else is present when you do. And if things develop as I think they will, our killer may discover it's not so easy to get away with murder. <laughs> Right, boss. Where are you, Mr. Keene? Over here, behind the ledge. Oh, thanks, preservers. This cave gives me the creep, boss. Uh, did you follow my instructions, Mike? Yes, sir. I went back to the house with Mr. Bly, and I told the two women you had found Jim Ramsey's body here in the cave, and that you and I were going to town to report to the police. Then I started the taxi and drove it out of sight, and circled back here to the cave on foot. Did you search that car? Yes, Mr. Keene. What did you find? Nothing at all. Well, you may not know it, Mike, but you found a great deal. Let me see. It must be at least 20 minutes since you left them in the house. We ought to have a visitor inside this cave within... Boss, someone's coming. Yes. 
Our murderer, Mike. Hold your gun and your flashlight ready. Right, sir. Flash your light, Mike. What? Don't move, Mr. Bly. If you do, Mike Clancy will shoot to kill. Keen. Put this man under arrest, Mike. For the murder of Jim Ramsey and Edward Johnson. You're crazy, Keen. I never even knew Edward Johnson. You murdered Edward Johnson because he evidently ran into a clue that would have sent you to the electric chair for Jim Ramsey's death. That's a lie. You proved your guilt, Bly, by coming to this cave just now. Jim's body was hidden behind that rock where we caught you stooping. Only one other man knew that body was there, Hiram Wedd. Then why don't you accuse him? Because the man who killed Ramsey wanted his body hidden forever. That was an important part of the plan. You came back to hide Ramsey's body in some other place, knowing we'd found it. And what was my motive, Keen? You can't just pick up a watch salesman and accuse him of murder. You're no watch salesman, Bly. You claim your line is wristwatches. And yet, when I asked you for the time, I saw that you carried a pocket watch. Not a very good advertisement for a man in your trade. Besides, I searched your car, mister. Since when does a salesman travel without samples? You were also clever about puncturing the tires of Hiram's taxi. At first, you thought it might prevent us from getting word to the police. Then you decided it would be smarter to lend us the tires from your car, just to make you appear more innocent. You still don't have a murder motive, Keene. Go, go through his clothes for identification, Mike. I have a feeling his name isn't Bly. No, don't you touch oh, me. Oh, take it easy, mister. Or maybe we get, get tough, tough with you. Here. This is what it, boss. Mm. Oh. Bly, is it? Mr. Keene, his name is Ramsey. Sanford Ramsey. It's on this car registration. So you're related to Jim Ramsey. Look, I'll make a deal with you, Keene. In six months, I'll come into three million dollars. Let me go free and we'll split 50-50. Three million dollars, eh? Whose money are you inheriting? My uncle's. It was left to Jim, but it goes to me if Jim dies. Jim left California six years ago and disappeared. But I finally caught up with him and decided to play this my own way. Now I understand why you wanted Jim's body to be missing. Jim Ramsey was gone for six long years. One more would have made it seven. A man is declared legally dead after seven years, and you'd have inherited the money. The way I planned it, Keene, no one will be the wiser. I knew about this old house and the cave... Then I put the map in the fireplace, knowing Jim would fall for it. Thinking he could find hidden gold, search the place. I made that map myself, Keene. And you also made a case for the state that's foolproof. You mean you won't play along with me? Of course I will. As far as a prison cell and a judge and jury... Why, you... Put the handcuffs on him, Mike. Mr. Sanford Ramsey, or Bly, if he prefers, is going on trial for murder in the first degree. <laughs> And so Mr. Keene finds a solution to the forgotten cave murder case. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A N A C I N. <laughs> Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Dan Hummer. Dialogue by Lawrence Cleave. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old tracer turns to the engaged girl murder case.
when knife-like pains are stabbing you in the back from unusual exercise, lifting, or other muscular strain, it's a good time to try heat liniment. Heat is strong, yet does not burn the skin. You just brush it on the sore place with the applicator, and right away heat starts to penetrate to ease the pain and bring soothing relief. And it keeps on working for hours to bring grand comfort. Get heat liniment at your drugstore. It's H-E-E-T, heat. Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, will be on the air next Thursday at this same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series, Oh, and a Man's Wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, not facing the brightest murderer around, nevertheless, Mr. King does prevail against that obviously false cover story. Now on to talking about the future of what will be on Mondays. Now, I want to say from the outset, we still have quite a few months of Mr. Keene episodes to play through. In fact, the 1950 has the most Mr. Keene episodes uh, available of any uh, year, so it's not like we're a month away from the series ending. But this is the time of year where I give you a heads up of all the stuff we're planning for the next season. So when Mr. Keene ends, we'll actually embark on something different. As this is our 10th season, we're going to have a poll where all of our listeners will get to vote and rank their favorite shows that we've played so far. And we'll have two divisions. We will have one for series where we have 11 or more episodes in circulation. And then another division for series that have uh, between 3 and 10 episodes in circulation. We'll play the top 20 of those that have 11 or more episodes in circulation. And the top 5 of those that have between 3 and 10 episodes in circulation. And then I think there will be a couple weeks where it will be host choice. Uh, so that will be how we'll spend the rest of Season 10 after we finish Mr. Keen. I will also let you know that we will actually only have 50 weeks of our typical cycle. And I'll let you know as we go on with our... Uh, listener support campaign that's coming up this week and starts tomorrow, what we'll be doing during those two other weeks. I think uh, people will find it exciting and it's going to be a quite interesting time. So uh, be sure and listen uh, tomorrow for special announcements of a uh, program that we will be doing on Tuesdays uh, during season 10. And uh, now we do turn to listener uh, comments and feedback. And Daniel, I want to thank uh, for uh, supporting my uh, 524 uh, involvement, where I'm doing the uh, f uh, four half marathons in five weeks, uh, coming up in October and November over at 524.greatdetectives.net. And uh, Daniel... Uh, Daniel not only donated, but he left a comment over there as well. Uh, he writes, podcasting legends aren't sitting all the time? Question uh, mark. Go at him, go. Uh, well, thanks so much, Daniel. Yeah, not if we want to be living podcast legends. Uh, we don't. Doing races is something that I really got into just in the last five years, so... It started after I've been doing the podcast for several years, uh, and sometimes uh, it has been combined. Uh, during uh, 2014, which was the first time I actually uh, did the series of half marathons, and I was training, um, you know, and I realized after I'd signed up that I'd already started on doing the war which was a seven-day-a-week uh, podcast 
that ran a limited run. And, you know, I thought to myself, okay, smart guy, how are you going to manage this extra seven day a week podcast while also trying to train for a half marathon? Uh, but I actually went ahead and used my training time to listen to uh, programs that would be aired on the podcast. And I found so much of the uh, World War II programming just to be really inspiring as I went and did my training. And also uh, the attitude of courage and self-sacrifice to be challenging, particularly if I reached a point in my training where I was feeling a bit sorry for myself. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, it, it does work together in the end. Uh, thanks so much for the donation and for the comment, and that will do it for now. Join us back here uh, tomorrow as we bring you uh, an episode of Nick Carter. And then uh, next Tuesday, we'll be bringing you Security Agent USA. And join us back here next Monday for another episode of Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.